<laughs> man, I'm out, really. Really? You're a bitch, man? Craig, really? Man, I'm out. You cross the line. Cross the line. Cross the line. It says here that in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, Gabby Garcia is the most decorated female ever. She's about 6'4, 235 pounds, and she's a nine time Brazilian Jiu Jitsu world champion. Craig Jones is also a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu champion, but he's about 5'11, 195 pounds. So about a 40 pound difference. And apparently, Craig Jones was taking this pretty serious. It says here that Jones is betting big money on himself to win via leg lock specifically. He wrote, in case you thought I was gonna take it easy on her, a hundred K of my own money on the line. Tell them to bring me my money. Yeah! Oh, we got another announcement here today. Another the biggest one. super fight in grappling history. We signed it actually. I signed this maybe an hour and a half ago. So I got the okay. contract here to put Yeah, but bust it out. Uh oh. The biggest super fight in grappling history? I really? Mean, yeah, it might be. But now we're talking the most decorated female athlete of all time, Gabby Garcia, has put pen to paper to face me <laughs> on my own event. So we're talking 10, 11 time world champion, four time ADCC champion. You six have been four. joking around about this forever. This is actually gonna happen? 100% gonna happen. We booked it, we signed this contract earlier. She's 6'4", 250 pounds. I don't know what, she, I don't know what she weighs, yeah. So I'll, I'll take her on. Wow. I feel good. I, I probably won't train for it. I'll be planning this damn event, eh? You won't train? I won't train that hard. This <laughs> 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 nah. is the alley against Gabby Garcia. 71 victories in her competitive career. And ladies and gentlemen, Craig Jones quickly out on the legs. Heavy pressure from Gabby Garcia to sprawl here. Wondering what his method of victory is going to be, Gabby Garcia. Oh, my God. Playing half guard oh. here. Oh. It's the triangle. There you go, my brother. <laughs> oh, we got Renato Laranger in the corner as well. Come on, man. That's too easy. The bridge is in the way. You gotta move the bridge. That's a horse weave. You gotta watch out for that. You know, Gabby's taking this one seriously. Looking to come up on the oh, body line. Craig reverse with the reversal. Jones, that heel slips out. Watch the fucking knee line. <laughs> the the bridge is flying her from that one. She have an Indian's burn. Yes. Use that to your advantage. His left. Is he going to get the finish? Well, time expires. We're through round number one. <laughs> well, uh, perhaps unsurprisingly, 10 nights across the board going the way of Craig Jones. Oh, and the crowd did not like that at all. The standing position and a Imanari roll attempt from Craig Jones. Oh, he's gonna go for the twister! Go for a twister, Craig Jones! Don't you fucking do it, Mike! You're gonna make Eddie Bravo look good! We'll never hear the fucking interview! Kimura Grip, is he gonna get a submission here? Well, the problem is, he put all that money on himself to win by leg lock. He's gonna try to break her teeth out to win this thing. Back control, you can hear the crunching. Big trouble dealing with the hair here. Is he willing to break her leg? I mean, she's that, not even addressing. That's what she's touting him to do, right? It's an interesting tactic. He's telling her. This. I don't think she's willing to tap. Big squeeze coming. Oh, she does. The red naked Joe gets the job done. Craig Jones is the world's first jujitsu intergender champion. That's what I. Thought. That's a W. That's E1. That's one. That's a double. Craig versus Gabby. That was funny, huh? His entrance when he ripped off. Oh, he could have broke her spine. That's the stuff that I don't like. Yeah. Oh, he wasn't yeah. probably trying to twerk on it. If he was, she would have tapped. Right. He could have blew her f***ing leg out. He could have hurt her, but he didn't. Yeah. He took care of her. It's so f***ing crazy to see the levels. Because I bet a lot of people were like, never really grapple, but watch a little bit. They were probably like, oh, f***. Oh, for sure. For sure. And he was toying with her he knew what was gonna happen yeah for sure yeah it reminded me of me and tim rolling yeah he looked like gabby what a good sport gabby though i know oh, yeah. mm -hmm. made it funny i hope made she it backbone out by him. i beg your pardon shout out to gabby garcia for being a good sport she a little bit of an asshole though because he bet a hundred thousand that he would submit her via leg lock and when he had the chance to do it she didn't tap because she knew he wouldn't follow through with actually breaking her leg if craig was a guy with less experience she probably would have won because of her size and her level of experience but unfortunately testosterone and male grip strength just gives men a huge advantage
I try to keep that grip strong because I gotta choke one of these hate motherfuckers out. Let me get the mic. Are you deaf? Yeah. I know. Let me get the mic. Why? Because girls are on top. Nobody wants to see a boy on TV. This is about hockey, not girls. This is about girls that like hockey. Cringe, cut it. Just cut it off. Oh, I'm beating your ways. You had two hours with Charleston White. What would you do? Go shopping. Go shopping? Yeah. That's the first thing you would do? Yeah. I'll you have shopping. two hours though. You're gonna spend the yeah, whole time. I'll go shopping. I'll probably rub his back and make sure he's like no cramps in his back and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. Charles she think I'm a trick. Yeah, I'm a mother player that wants some. You lying to me. You think I'm gonna take you shopping and you gonna rub my back? You got to touch my. Man, we go, man, no, nah, hell no. Nah. And she didn't want to double up with me. Tell us to the tie line. Are you sure nah. she's a nut? Man, ain't nothing wrong with my back. Man, my pressure on nuts is build up. This motherfucker heavy. This motherfucker needs to explode on my back. That on my own goddamn back. No. Nah. Shopping? Back rub? Man, please. Hell no. Nah. <laughs> Them old white boy who did Man, please. Man, I'm shit no. Nah. Hell no. Nah. Facts, I'm with Charleston. You got two hours to go on a date with me and you don't even want to get to know me? The only date idea you can think of is something that's going to exclusively benefit you? Hell, if I wanted a massage, I can go down to the little Asian lady down the street. I don't recommend it and I'm not the type of guy to buy women, but if you're going to make it transactional, I'm not one of these OnlyFans simps that's going to give you $200 for a picture. If I'm paying four, $500, I'm leaving here with something. I'm like, I'm leaving here with something. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm from around the way. I'm leaving with something. <laughs> Damn. Hello. Hey. <laughs> How are you? I smoke. You smoke crap. Oh damn. You don't like me no more. You smoke crap. That's a little crazy. At least I'm being honest. Crack is cheap. This is women's beach volleyball, and this is men's beach volleyball. Teammates in Olympic beach volleyball must wear uniforms of the same color, and they must be numbered one and two. The women can wear either a one-piece, two-piece bathing suit, shorts, sleeved, sleeveless tops, or a full-body suit in cold weather. Due to the typically warm playing conditions, most opt to wear a two-piece. The fact of the matter is that most female athletes in competition are choosing to wear the clothing that they wear because they believe it gives them a competitive advantage of some sort. Even this whole Nike tracksuit outrage, the one with the lack of coverage that went viral, is just an option female track and field athletes have. There are close to 50 unique track and field uniform options, including the new viral leotard, both men and women. Athletes will get the chance to choose their outfit or combination of outfits to match their style and personal preference the best, Nike wrote. And I understand how this may be hard for somebody who's never competed to understand, but competitors, male or female, tend to not give two shits about how revealing their clothes are. As an example, this is what I wore when I competed in MMA. You think my bros didn't give me shit for those Daisy Dukes? Do you think I cared? No, because it helped me win. And not to be all reverse sexism guy, but I don't see male pole vaulters having the opportunity to do their sport in a pair of Speedos. If they were allowed to, it would have made this story a lot more interesting. <laughs> Facts, this is my third place bronze medal from the 2029 Pan Am Games. I've gotten to represent the U.S. in multiple different countries on the world stage, and he's right. You get a plethora of different outfits to choose from. You even get three pairs of Ray-Bans when you compete on the international stage. To be honest, I say that the dress code is stricter for men when you're competing in international games. But when you have a worldview like feminism, you just look for sexism in everything, even if you don't understand it. I'm not upset with y'all because I know you're mentally ill everyone does a few reps when the burn starts and they stop no one goes the extra mile it keeps going like no one's in here right now why because it's saturday evening everyone's going to party no one's in here it's me you know no one goes the extra mile the thing about traffic jams guys there are no traffic jams in the last mile of the race it's just you and your shadow in the beginning everybody's there all the pretenders and the con contenders, they're all there. But the last yard of life, the last mile of journey, ain't nobody but you and your shadow. Traffic jams don't exist that far. Because everyone else starts giving up. 
That's what I like too, the mental concept. I'm going that far. I love the, the physical high of the burn being released. I love the mental high that I improve improved myself. I love the mentality that I'm beating my competitors silently where they don't even know it. They're out partying, I'm out here getting ahead. I just, I just convince the man. We that's it, brother. That that's 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 the way it is, cuz. This is your daily reminder to get your ass in the gym. We will not be contributing to the pussification of humanity. I'm not gonna lie, y'all. It's kind of feminine and weird to not want to sweat. And I can't believe that there are grown men that go days, weeks, months, sometimes even years without breaking a single sweat. At what time in human history was that possible? We should aim to push ourselves physically and mentally at least one time a day. So make sure you get to the gym today. You owe it to your yourself and if you need some more motivation here you go stop being a bitch and come on the thing about white trash is you can abuse it like a heavy bag it's very durable that's got to be racist there's no way although this build is very wicked she definitely has an audi i have nothing against audis i'm just saying it could hang a little bit low but it could be a good time let's see yes whoa whoa i thought we missed i thought we missed i know your undies prob smell like seeks that's okay with me LOL. As long as you let me finish inside, we won't have any issues getting along. I mean to keep it a little bit straightforward there. If you give your child a boy name like Aaron, Ryan, or Camden, you're asking her to be obese. But luckily for us, her kitchen pie feels like an oven. Probably a good cook, nice to cuddle with, obviously gives insane neck. If your hair is pink, you have a septum, and you're obese. Let's go ahead and take her off the streets, ladies and gentlemen. Come here! You're mine. I tried being respectful and not staring at your fupa, but it stared at me first. If I make you, can you go back to the pink hair? Gives me nostalgia from when I used to with my cousin's Barbie doll. You better go somewhere and beat your meat. 85 to 90% of life is just showing up. If you show up, there's a chance something could happen. Show up. Something bad is about to happen. Exactly, bro. We have to show up. And not only show up, you got to show up with some enthusiasm. Opportunity ain't going to find us, so we got to find opportunity. And we ain't going to find opportunity if we don't show up. We got to remember that enthusiasm is contagious. So when you attack life with a certain level of urgency and enthusiasm, opportunities are going to find you. Show up when you don't want to, look the part, be enthusiastic, and have a sense of urgency. And opportunities will find you. If I'm lying, I'm dying. Thanks. Hey. I'm Sean, nice to meet you. I'm Zell, nice to meet you. Welcome back, Sigmas and Alphas. And in today's tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to get a girl's number. What? Step one, start a friendly conversation. Approach her with a genuine smile and start a casual conversation. Remember, you're trying to book on the first link, so keep it quick. What? So, like, what do you like to do for fun? <laughs> you're funny as fuck. What? I'm literally, this kid is hilarious. <laughs> Uh, hey, I'm Sean. I'm Sean, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Cool. Should I make space or something? Yeah. Right. Come sit, Vivian. I'm Step two. Build a connection. I know you don't really give a fuck about her hobbies, dreams, or aspirations, but still, keep the chat fun and relaxed. Share a bit about yourself and find something you both like. You play any sports or anything? <laughs> I played softball. I played football in high school. It was pretty shit, chill. Shit, were you good? Yeah, I got hurt though, like everybody else. Same like, Really? Yeah. You know, I blow out my kidney. Like, I let, yeah. How do you blow out your kidney? I, step three. Read the situation. If she doesn't look like she wants to be talking with you, that means she wants you even more, King. Watch how she reacts. If she's smiling and chatting back, she's probably into the conversation. Get the fuck out. Who are you talking to? Oh, I'm just listening to a prop. Nothing, nothing crazy. What? What? What are you listening to? Oh, it's, just, it's just a prop. Oh, a prop. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I was pronouncing it right type shit. Step four, we're almost there, King. Now, ask for her number confidently. When the moment feels right, say something like, I've had a great time talking with you. Can I fuck? I mean, can I get your number so we can continue this? And remember, number? always be respectful yeah. and confidence is key. Hey, so like, on the first date. oh, uh, can I get your number? Oh, or... my, yeah, you're funny. I'm oh, it's a dub. It's been a dub. Y'all yeah, know what they say, right? If you can make a girl laugh and giggle, you can make that ass clap and jiggle. It did!
right. And and who's the wrong. most beautiful woman you could think of? What's her name? A little lady called Pam Anderson. Pam Anderson, which decade? We're talking peak. Like the 90s? Or like, yeah. yeah. Here's Pam Anderson. 1,000 men are rating her. We're looking for their average answer. You're right next to her. They're rating you next. Are we going to have you guys do this? You and Ryan Reynolds? Yeah, I'll do back? it. Well, she has the fake that's mine are real, so that's a preferential thing. That Then spermy eyebrows from the 90s. I'm confident in saying we'd go pretty much toe to toe. Okay. Okay, uh, your ideal Oh, no, 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 guy. I'm going to give you the same exact answer that you guys all gave. <laughs> There's no guy I can think of on planet Earth who's even close. To, I'm the best looking dude who's ever lived by my own estimation. Finish. It's how I feel. Just humor me. Pick I'm a guy. I'm humoring. Play game. Play I'll ball. tell you what. As soon as you stop lying to me, I'll stop lying to you. Play Where do you actually... Okay. Right next to Pamela Anderson in her peak. I Tell think the truth. I go toe to toe with Pamela. Okay, Anderson. great. Then I'll go toe to toe with want? Jason Momoa. I can get behind Brad. Brad Pitt in Legends of the he Fall. Can get, he That's can do this guy he right here. If she thinks that she's a 10 out of 10, then boy, oh boy, do I have a beachfront property in Arizona for her. Like, let's just live in reality here. She's not a 10 out of 10, and that's fine. Not being a 10 doesn't make you unattractive. Being delusional makes you unattractive. Uh -huh. I don't suck, but I expect to get my pussy in. Is that a problem? If you ain't gonna suck my dick, you cool with me going to get my dick sucked by somebody else? That's not ridiculous. That's not ridiculous to say that. I mean, she fine, but you giving me flashbacks. What kind? You stole my mink coat in, in Milwaukee. No, I, didn't. I didn't steal. A girl looked just like you stole my mink coat in Milwaukee. I'm from DC. I don't even be in Milwaukee. I know, but if if I might get flashbacks that you gonna take something else from me. I like a thief. To the aspect. left. She fucked it up for you. She fucked it up. More often than not, of all the relationships that you've had, do you end the relationship or does the guy? I've ended every single relationship. What about you? I've also ended every single relationship. How many relationships have you been in? Three. What about you? Three. What about you? Mostly me. How many relationships have you been in? Four. What about you? I've ended them all, I think like five. I've ended them all and I've only been in two. What about you? Five or six and only once has somebody else ended the relationship. What about you? 75% me, eight or nine relationships. Four relationships and I've ended all of them. Ended all three. Whoa. <laughs> so hold on. A typical complaint I hear from women is, why are men so commitment phobic? Why are men scared of commitment? Why don't men want to get married? All of you, it's almost unanimous, have ended all of your relationships. Once something? you get commitment, you overwhelmingly okay, it's end not, it's not Exactly, you heard it in every sitcom, every commercial, and every movie for the past 40 years. Men are afraid of commitment. And really it's just a fear-mongering feminist talking point to try to convince women to not get married over the fear that the man is gonna leave them. When by and large, that's just not true. Women file for divorce like 70% of the time, and the higher the education, the more likely she is to file for divorce. I think for women who have a college education, it's about 90% of them are the ones who file for divorce. So by and large, men aren't leaving marriages and breaking up their families for the sake of their own happiness women are let me know in the comments below if this video was a wrl and give me the hbo special that's a help brother out special hit the like and the subscribe button for more content till next time